enough about it. And so as we know with the topic, with uh, any sort of paragraph, we want to start with a clear topic sentence. The poem th three furs mantra is describing the remain remaining old guard of a destroyed forest. Furthermore, it develops concepts of sustainability and loss through a wide range of literary tools. So that's a fairly solid uh, opening sentence. Now remember, it's, it's just draft one. We might edit this and upgrade it. So now we could look at, and so it, traditionally you've got a choice here when you organize your paragraph. You could look at stanza one, stanza two, stanza three. So they could kind of have three sections looking at each stanza. Or you could look at the beta level devices first, then the alpha level devices first, and then the theta level devices uh, third. That, that would be what I would choose to do. So you'd actually have to go through and finish out your overall analysis and complete the right-hand column. Um, but because I've only done one stanza, I'm going to end up just doing a few more sentences to demonstrate how I would develop these ideas based on the analysis that I have completed so far. Okay, so let's kind of just move forward with it on the beta level. The poem does have a rhyme scheme of A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, Additionally, it is clear that the poet is sticking to 10 beats per line. If we went on and did our further analysis, we'd see that all the lines are 10 beats. Now here's something interesting. This is what we call a citation. Uh, and you'll notice that it's got the author's name, then the date of publication, and then the line numbers or the page numbers. Uh, we'll learn how to do this in greater depth as we develop our APA tools. But we're just going to push on here, moving to the alpha window. There were a number of metaphors, similes, personification. There were a number of metaphors. Okay. There were a wide array of tools injected into this poem, including metaphors, alliteration, personification, and Yes, we're doing well on this video here. Keep going. Let's go. Sometimes it takes a minute to um, look back and think.
Okay, so now we're kind of finished with our alpha level, and now we're going to move into the final level here. Notice how I use a cue, a little writing tip there, or a little uh, gluing, cohesive writing tool to, to indicate to the reader I'm moving into this ending phase of my analysis. And you can see that what I'm doing is whenever I do that full overall consideration of what the whole poem is talking about, I put all the lines down. You can be more specific. You could pick a specific idea, attach it to a certain specific line, as we've done here. Um, but again, we've, we've done a few things. We've, we've introduced three levels of analysis. We've also looked at how to build a framework by using the left-hand column where the poetry is and the right-hand column where we actually include a very organized thinking method of going through the beta level, then the alpha level, then the theta level. And then we take that analysis and we transform it into strong paragraph writing. And now we've got to wrap it up. All right, so that's it's not a completed paragraph, but it is it is a draft of a paragraph. And of course, we would want to have done our full analysis of all three stanzas before jumping straight into our complete uh, writing process. But I'm doing it a bit piecemeal here because I want to leave some of the poem unanalyzed so that you guys can have a crack at it. All right, good luck, everybody. That's an example of how to set up a literary analysis and then move into the actual writing process.